you're in pain Soothing as a springtime rain To have a friend right in your corner Your heart will feel a little warmer Tender, loving care Tender, loving care Each warm and friendly touch Let someone know you care so much Tender, loving Good evening, I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, I'm happy to talk about this interface between Christianity and medicine. And tonight, as I had promised last week, I'm going to continue to discuss this new book uh, that has just come out, The Stories of a West Virginia Doctor for His Grandchildren. And I told you I'd like to tell you some more stories tonight about the book, and from the book, and I will do that, uh, particularly uh, since it is about the grandchildren, if the book is for them, uh, I will address a few stories that I wrote, particularly about the three little girls that uh, now bless our home as our first grandchildren. Well, let me tell you also, as we begin, uh, some good news. I, I consider it good news anytime there's uh, an endorsement of sorts uh, for a book. Uh, it helps with the sale of the book, it helps with the uh, promotion, and of course maybe encourages other people to write memoirs. And by the way, this all began uh, because my father wrote his stories of a West Virginia doctor after my mother had passed away. And when uh, th there was a three year window, he lived longer than mom, uh, three more years, and he decided it was time to write his memoir. And he did a great job and it became the best-selling book uh, that the uh, McLean Publishing has ever put together. And it's still selling well in places like the Greenbrier Resort and White Sulphur Springs and down at Tamarack, as well as 50 bookstores throughout West Virginia. And uh, so I have followed Dad as I followed him into medical practice by writing some of these stories. But let me encourage you, there is a place for West Virginia history, oral history, uh, to be written down. It, it needs to be done. Uh, the stories will slip away from us. I was just talking to a friend of mine at the Strawberry Festival this week and he, he went to uh, Selbyville for eight years before he came down to, the, uh, to our school and talking to another classmate, she went to uh, Hemlock for eight years before she came down to the junior high. Uh, these uh, kids, many of us, many of you all watching this tonight, I went to these one-room, two-room schoolhouses throughout the county. Uh, no one will ever know about those uh, wonderful places, really, for education and learning, the friendships, the, the community, uh, the way of life that that represented, unless you all who, who, did, who lived that life uh, would write them down. It's a very important lesson to do. Uh, but, let me, but let me tell you about this endorsement uh, from I was applying to renew my license to practice medicine. It's a process every two years that doctors go through. <clears throat> and of course, we, we have to uh, keep up our studies, a continuing medical education. Every profession does it. Teachers go to summer school uh, to get uh, more expertise, to be better teachers. Um, preachers come to the Methodist Conference here for a week of education and worship, and they take other classes to be better preachers. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that each profession does this. My son is an, an attorney. I know that he t goes to conventions where attorneys discuss various new issues, new things, new laws, things coming down the pike, and, and improve their ability to serve uh, through continuing education. In any event, this is my cycle to, to renew my license to practice medicine, and I've taken classes, that required classes, to, to renew my license. But I thought, well, here's this book. I, I'll submit this book as a part of my education. You know, it takes endless hours to put a book like this together. And uh, I got a reply back today, and, and uh, it has been accepted for 30 hours of credit. Uh, and, and considering that 50 hours is, is will renew a license, that's a, an appreciable uh, recognition 
of the value of the book. Uh, and there was a comment uh, with it. It said, this is a tidy bit of medical writing. A tidy bit of medical writing. So I'd rather be tidy than untidy. I think my mother would be happy if I was tidy at least once in my life. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, that's the comment. And then, and then the, goes on, the com comment goes on to say, this is a history of medicine practiced in the hills of West Virginia in the past and it's important to, con to have this history written down. So it's an endorsement of what we have been trying to do. Well, let me, uh, with that, uh, let me say that it is available. Uh, if, if you were to uh, go to the St. Joseph's Hospital Auxiliary uh, gift shop and purchase it there, all the proceeds, all the proceeds, nothing, nothing for myself, would go toward the auxiliary being able to buy wonderful things for the hospital uh, to make sure that we remain a caring, compassionate, and uh, competent uh, hospital. Uh, I know in the past uh, the, the uh, auxiliary has been able to buy things like uh, pediatric uh, warmers uh, and other equipments necessary, say, for the delivery, something my father invested him a great deal of his practice in, some 3,300 babies in his career. Some, and Dr. Chamberlain, Dr. Huffman, over 12,000 babies between the three of them in a 40-year span. Uh, so, so the auxiliary has them the, up at the St. Joseph's Hospital. Uh, Noel Tenney and those who work and volunteer with him at the uh, Historic Society on Main Street. It's open on Tuesday evenings from 6 till 8. Uh, they have the book now. And again, uh, if you buy it from the Historic Society, all of the money goes to support preservation of history here in Upshur County. Uh, they will have summer shows uh, at their Civil War era church building, uh, historic building uh, there by the uh, Bill Kelly Chevrolet uh, garage uh, uh, right there on Main Street, the little white building. They'll have uh, shows there all summer long. You may want to come take in a lecture, uh, see the exhibits, stop by the um, the uh, facility on Main Street across from the courthouse. And if you want to pick up this book or other books they have about the history of Upshur County, uh, they're available for you. My friend Bill Hornback has given them copies of his mother's Whirligig column that he has assimilated together, another wonderful book about local history. Uh, and it's also the final place on Main Street here is Artistry on Main, the newly opened uh, artist co-op on Maine and I invite you to come in see what there are 30 different artists including several authors uh, like myself uh, who have uh, books and and uh, pottery and and uh, wood carving and so many wonderful things there uh, artistry on Maine and it's for sale there too well, let me share a few stories with you um, I as I say I wanted to do this this week uh, heard comments from you, you that you were anticipating this. And so I'm going to read, uh, first of all, a poem by my wife, Erasley. Not all this, the stories in this are my stories. Uh, these are stories for our grandchildren. And, uh, but this is a universal theme of, about motherhood. We've just come through Mother's Day, and I hope you appreciate uh, my wife's uh, poem uh, called Mama. Four simple letters. By the way, she wrote this when she was a teenager in the Philippines. Uh, and you'll, you'll see uh, how tender uh, she was with her own mother. Uh, four simple letters, two syllables, combined together. A divine word is, when spoken, softly spoken in this world, enough to lift a poor, sinking soul. Mama, oh, how sweet a name with fairest face I've ever seen, endowed with everlasting flame, to warm her far shivering teen. Mama, Mama, so wonderful, so adorable. As I travel the past with my reverie, tis always Mama I meet and see, that angelic face, a countless memory, who was, is, and ever be a sweet, a special angel to me. Mama cared for me, a disturbing baller, taught me well, a naughty youngster, guides me now, a blooming teenager, never to desert me until forever. Mama, 
Mama, truly a mother, truly an angel. <coughs> Only a budding teen when college called me, and I was sent so far away. I felt so empty, chilled and lost, like a poor crying sheep who's gone astray. Hills, mountains, and deep blue sea secluded me for Mama to see. Yet her love and warmth reached me. I felt near her, warmed and secured. Mama, Mama, unfathomable, incomparable. What a great lover my Mama is. Her smile so pure, divine, and fresh. Her love unflinching for a moment. Ne'er could be found in a lover's world. I thank thee, O oh dear Lord, for the, thy precious gift. All mine is to have and love. I'm hers till all is dust. Mama, Mama, I love you more and more. So this was published in 1960. Uh, my wife was a teenager at that time. Uh, her allusion there to, to being away from her mother as a teen is that uh, the public school in the Philippines is only 10 years. It has now gone to 12 years as it is in America, but uh, it was 10 years at that time, and then she would go to college. So uh, indeed, she would be just 15 or 16 years old when separated from her mother. Our son, Rance, who has never wanted to be outdone by anything, uh, when he realized that there was a poem that his mother had written about Mama, he wrote one about Mama, and it's included in this book too. Uh, so I'd like to read that uh, just to show how Sons and mothers uh, do relate well one to another. A premonition felt before syllables or letters. A song noted, a bond that silence cannot sever. You were the first beat of my heart. A miracle consecrated the seas, they did part. And into this world you carried me within, a land before time, sheltered from vice and sin. You were my wisdom. Mary's grace you did beg, and you bore a new life, a tita forthcoming with egg. Fresh footprints made in the sand, moments of triumph and laughter, visions so grand. The waves also crashed, the tempest terrific. You stilled the waters of my eyes, an ocean pacific. Why is language lost in your love? Is it because you were sent from heaven above? From the beginning of, time, of life and at the close of this drama, God ordained one word to speak with love, Mama. Excellent poem, excellent poem. And we thank Rance for that and, and the efforts uh, that the children have in, in uh, supporting what we're doing and, uh, and how we uh, have raised them. We're proud that they've turned out so well and how they are now raising our granddaughters. And we're very proud of that also. I couldn't uh, talk about a book like this if I didn't tell a little bit about my grandmother, uh, also a great, great influence on us. And uh, I hope that you're catching a theme here. Uh, these are stories that we are recording for our granddaughters. Uh, if we did not write them down, who would know the stories? They would slip away. Do I know stories of my own grandfather in New Jersey? No, very few. Do I know stories of my uh, Grandparents, uh, even the Flanagans, my grandmother, grandfather, uh, through the ministry, itinerant ministry with the Methodist Church over 50 years together, very little. I don't know it very much. Um, and uh, even as people who knew them pass away, I, I, I have, I've lost my chance to know. So, so it's important to write these down. And this is the one about my grandmother. This also, I think, uh, talks about uh, a relationship with God. Very important. We talk about the combination of combining Christianity and medicine and uh, looking at that interface. And this certainly is at that interface. Uh, here I am, a young doctor, uh, coming, bringing my wife, my, my future wife, Arasley, uh, to Buchanan for a strawberry festival and uh, introducing her to my grandmother, uh, who is uh, just within months of dying, as it turns out. So this is the story. She, uh, she, she spoke to me, and I entitled it, Now I Can Die. Grandmother Mary Barnes Flanagan influenced me more than any other person growing up. After she suffered a major stroke that left her bedfast and blind, 
I pondered her fate often. Grandfather, the Reverend Paul L. Flanagan, died in December of 1972. This left grandmother alone in the bedroom they shared in our home during their final years. Mom, Dad, Beth, and our collie, Briar, kept her company. They took extraordinary care of her. When I returned from West Virginia University School of Medicine, she would want me to sit by her bedside and to tell her stories of my life experiences. She, in turn, shared her life story, singing songs from the United Methodist Hymnal, Blessed the Tie That Bound Us. What joy to be one with my grandmother. Her prayer for me had always been that I would serve Jesus. For years, she prayed that I would be a pastor. Medicine was an okay second choice. Because of my respect for grandmother, as well as my own ambivalence, actually, I laid a fleece by applying to both seminary and medical school at the same time. God would direct my path. Grandmother was certain. Indeed, my early acceptance to medical school pleased both grandmother and me. That major life decision behind me, the next one in grandmother's eyes, would be finding God's chosen life partner for me. Medical school felt to me like carrying 36 hours of major courses. At West Virginia Wesley, my course load was often 16 or 18 hours, credit hours. So in my reports back to grandmother, my love life was pretty sparse. However, both of us knew that God is always on time. Never early, never late. She wanted God's best for me. We made it a matter of prayer. After four grueling years of medical school, I moved on to residency with West Virginia University in Charleston in the new program with Charleston Area Medical Center. I would take a psychiatric internship the first year, followed by electives in both psychiatry and family medicine. Feeling great to be called doctor and studying what I wanted to study made this a wonderful time of my life. Something else wonderful was also happening. I met Dr. Arasile Villanueva Gannon. Certainly, from the beginning, I knew she was a godly woman and a kind soul. In the springtime, in the hills of West Virginia, we celebrate the sweetest fruit God ever made, the strawberry. My pleasure was to invite Arashley to join our celebration at the Strawberry Festival in Buchanan. She must taste our berries for herself, and she must meet my family, including Grandmother Mary. All went well. There are many memories and stories to share. But a question I must ask Grandmother when I see her again in glory is about her observation made after meeting Arashley. Yes, Arasley impressed her with the beautiful songs of Christian faith, and she played so well on her guitar. Yes, she honored Grandmother with her testimony. But after Arasley was out of the room, Grandmother took my hands and pressed her hands around mine. She rose up to a sitting position, looked directly at me through blind eyes, sparkling. She told me boldly, quite boldly and directly, now I can die, for I have met the woman you are to marry. Certainly, Grandmother, Mary was right. But how did she know before I knew in my heart that Arashley was God's life partner for me? There are more ways to know than doctors learn in medical school, I figure. So when Grandmother and I meet again in Glory Land, I'll find out. So what a dear lady. And, and women also have instinct, don't they? They, they learn uh, things, they know things uh, instinctually. Uh, they learn things through the, a sixth sense. Uh, mother used to say she had eyes in the back of her head, which we worried about if we were doing something naughty. And uh, she also would say from time to time, a birdie told me, uh, implying that she had a communi communi communication with the nature and the birds around, which also bothered us if we were doing something naughty because we figured Mom might even hear from the birds. But in any event, uh, women know, and my grandmother knew in this moment, uh, something at a spiritual level that I didn't know in my heart, and that was that I would someday marry a Rasselie. And, and indeed that happened, and of course we're very pleased uh, that it happened. Well, let me, let me share another uh, story or two. Uh, this cover is orange. 
uh, you'll see the cover being orange. And uh, it, it makes a good book cover. I'm, I'm very glad that it's orange. Uh, I wanted it to be strawberry color. Uh, I wanted it to be scarlet uh, because of this story uh, that, that I'll read to you here in a minute. And, uh, but my sisters and I are working on a book and uh, it'll come out um, in due time, uh, hopefully this year. And, uh, and we're going to have a strawberry colored cover. Uh, we, we talked about that and decided that was good because we want to honor dad and mother and the strawberry festival. Of course, we just had a wonderful festival, festival this year and, and thank you. Thank you to the directors uh, who, who put this on as a volunteer effort I don't want to name anyone or leave anyone out, but, but uh, as a group, you work well together. I understand that even as the festival is over now, this is the just, just uh, ending on Sunday, and here we are on Tuesday, uh, that you will be meeting this week, uh, analyzing how things went and, and also planning for next year's festival. So thank you for the 73rd Strawberry Festival, and, and thank you for um, uh, having a, an a, uh, agricultural festival uh, for us to celebrate here in Buchanan. And, uh, but, but the strawberry co cover is coming out later. This is an orange cover. Uh, I, I picked it up because I was wanting to have scarlet. I wanted to honor my wife with the book cover. And there's a proverb, the 31st chapter of Proverbs is about the ideal woman. And verse 21 is about uh, particularly uh, a woman, a mother, uh, a wife uh, who is not afraid of snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet, the Bible says. And so we, we know our storms, don't we? We've had a harsh winter this year. We've had harsh winters in other years. Uh, this particular winter, the children are young and we are going to go to Dallas, Texas, where Rashley's sister lives, works as a nurse. Incidentally, she'll retire this fall after 40 years of nursing, never having had a sick day. Remarkable, isn't that? She's a, she's a godly woman herself, a praying woman, uh, wanting to be healthy, wanting to serve her patients her, and work for her hospital, the Presbyterian Hospital of Dallas, and has that quite remarkable, uh, I, I don't know who else, I don't even know who else has gone 40 years never having a sick day uh, from work. Uh, but that's Belia. Anyway, we're visiting Belia a number of years ago uh, in the, uh, for Christmas. Here's the story. Writing a memoir for the granddaughters requires some cogitating, as their great-grandfather would say. My dad would always say that. As Lolo, I agree. Certainly the life lesson is not being a fraidy cat. And this is something to illustrate to the children. King Solomon's wisdom, as recorded in the book of Proverbs, has been instrumental in the lives of Erasli and myself. In our youths, we both prayed to God for wisdom, as Solomon did. God has used the words of Solomon to instill wisdom in us. Erasli has used chapter 31 of Proverbs, which describes at length the qualities of a virtuous woman, in particular as a guide for her own life. I read the verse again. This she is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. The Rashley sister, Tita, Velia, Tita meaning aunt in the Filipino language, uh, we, we always called uh, the Rashley sisters by their Filipino name rather than Aunt K, as my sister K would be called, would say Tita, or Tita Velia, invited us all to Dallas, Texas for Christmas one year when the children were young. We always loved our visits, for she planned fun trips to huge malls and formal high steep church services. Sometimes Tita Belia even performed sacred dance. Often she led us in extended Christmas carol singings with her ukulele. Rasley and I wrote in our wills that if something happened to us as parents, we wanted Tita Belia to raise Maria and Rance. We trusted and respected Tita Belia. Rasley's youngest sister followed her into the healing arts as a nurse. She followed Rasley to America. When Rasley had a surgical biopsy for possible cancer, she flew to be at her bedside. Belia represented the Gannon family at our wedding as well, serving as a maid of honor. Tita Belia quite clearly is a VIP 
a very important person in our lives. So when Erasley announced to the family that our Christmas trip was on, we all cheered around the supper table. Furthermore, our furniture savings account had grown so we could get bedroom suits for the children. Maria wanted a canopy bed with fairy tale princesses. Ronce wanted a bed with drawers and a real desk. He also wanted an outer space themed bedspread. Snow began to fall as we headed out. We would drive through the night, Erasley and I taking turns sleeping and fighting a massive blizzard and snowstorm. The children were good travelers, sleeping to the whining of the engine. Maria and Ronce could sleep as soon as the motor ran. Our yellow beetle engine was particularly soporific. Still, in the early days of practice, I worked hard at the Total Life Clinic all day, the weekend before I'd taken in hospital duty for the emergency room and was paid for 60 hours of work from Friday night till Monday morning. And this, and I earned $1,200 or $30 an hour for doing that. This would be back in about 1980. At Nashville, Tennessee, Erasley and I considered taking a room as we were already 12 hours behind schedule on a normal 14-hour trip from Buchanan to Dallas. However, the weathermen predicted more snow and ice in Arkansas so it's better to push on. We said prayers, we praised God with song, we warmed our spirits even as the weather conditions worsened. Maria and Rasley planned out a yellow sunny canopy for her new bed. Ronce wanted scarlet for his bedspread and we talked about what would be the brightest color in outer space. I tried to tell him that orange was the color that showed up best in, outer, in darkest space. This is what the astronauts had scientifically found out when, when they went to space. And of course we knew growing up in the 60s, we knew that uh, getting to the moon was very important. And of course we, we looked at uh, the astronauts as heroes. So anyway, I argued that orange would be the color that he should have for an outer space bedspread, but he wanted scarlet. We debated away the hours and the miles. He dug his heels in on scarlet Erasley sided with him. After crossing the mighty Mississippi River at Memphis, the road conditions worsened. The large tracker trailer trucks were sliding off the road and into the ditches and jackknifing. We prayed harder for God's protection. After seeing five trucks piled up in a giant slow motion accident, we exited the next exchange. The Best Western Hotel had one last room. We took it. God had provided. Rasley raised her hands in praise. Since we did not even own a TV at home, uh, we didn't even, I was, I was on TV as I am today, but we didn't own a TV at that time. We enjoyed nonstop Disney uh, from our motel room. Rasley had plenty of food prepared for the road trip, as well as Christmas celebration at Tita Bellia's. We praised God for his provision. Certainly God made a way where there was no way. What stands out in my memory is that Rasley was not afraid of snow, and we were to be clothed in scarlet. So there you go. You know why the cover is now orange <laughs> and not scarlet. Well, until the next time, this is Dr. Greenbrier Almon thanking you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Special thanks for Channel 3 for the opportunity to come your way each week. Uh, in the next couple weeks, I'll be away, but you'll be hearing from Dennis Cordes, who used to run the TV studio, and he'll be talking about the American flag and other patriotic themes. And I'm sure that this will be enriching to you. So we'll see you later in June. Take care. Stories of a West Virginia doctor written by Dr. Harold D. Allman, a collection of 55 short stories about his experience as a small town doctor in central West Virginia and tender loving care. Stories from a West Virginia doctor, volume two, written by Dr. Greenbrier Allman, using videotapes to write 70 additional stories of his father's very colorful life as a small town doctor. They can be found for purchase at amazon.com and most local bookstores. Tune into Channel 3 Buckhannon for Tender Loving Care with Dr. Greenbrier Allman, where he talks about the connection between Christianity and medicine.